All right, well, it's time to punch Dallas in the mouth, respectfully, of course. And even after a disappointing blowout, why should we expect the team to respond? As Anthony DeBona from Outside the Birds joins to preview how the Eagles can sweep the boys. But first, let's run it. Preview for the Eagles in Dallas week. It's always massive. The fact that we can potentially sweep the ramifications of keeping the top spot at the NFC, taking that extra step in the division. All these things are great, right? And Dallas has this 14 game winning streak coming in, but Hertz hasn't lost in two years or more of uh, coming off of a loss, you know, back to back losses. Where's your head at? Where's your mind at? We talked about it a little bit, but as far as going into this game, I know the whole world seems like, or most of the world feels like, you know, oh, you get obliterated by the 49ers. So this is going to be an easy game for the Cowboys. It seems like everyone's picking the Cowboys, but uh, where are you at? Why should we be confident coming into this game? I'm confident because I saw how the team responded to that Jets loss. And the Dolphins was probably their, their most complete performance of the season. I know Jalen Hurts didn't put up a crazy numbers, but defensively, they dealt with those pre-snap motions. I know Jalen Waddle was hurt, but they did a great job in that game, and they responded well. So everything I'm hearing from the team themselves, I mean, Jason Kelsey's con- uh, con- comments were a little concerning, where he said they were anxious or whatever. But to me, that might be a good thing, because maybe this team was getting a little too comfortable, a little too full of themselves. They wouldn't say it out loud, but behind closed doors, I'm sure they were probably thinking that they were on a roll and that nobody was going to stop them. They were just going to beat the 49ers again like they did last year, or whatever the case was. But it's a little bit of a wake-up call, and I feel like this is a huge spot where if they feel like they're under pressure, good, because they need to, because they need to wake up in this spot especially. Because if they lose here, and if, I mean, if they lose and it's close and Dallas scores a late field goal, touchdown, whatever, to win, I might feel a little bit better, but if they go out there and they just look defeated and get blown out like they did last week, then I'll be concerned. But I think they they should be up for this game and they should be able to compete for win. Um, yeah, if if they get blown out, I think uh, we mentioned it uh, before, but you know, as as far as like just just the. Showing up, you know, AJ said the intensity was lacking and he's like, hey, we got that fixed, you know, in the interview um, earlier this week, you know, he said, it won't be a problem, you're going to see. So I'm, I, that's what I'm most excited for. It's like, all right, let's, let's get that intensely, let's get that emotion, um, the, the physicality, whatever you want to call it. And if it takes a little bit of shove in pregame, like I'm all right with that, you know, let, let's get a little extracurricular activity. It's Dallas for crying out loud. So, you know, let's, let's make something happen. But as far as this game here, uh, I, I'm confident too, I'm right there with you, but it, are there any kind of main keys to success uh, for, for this game coming in? What, what are you looking at for Dallas? I don't know if, you know, previously we saw what the Seahawks uh, did to them, but as you're going into this game, what, what do you see as potentials uh, to maybe take advantage of? And then, you know, also looking out for uh, on, on the defensive side. Well, let's not give uh, 191 yards to C.D. Lamb again. That's a good place to That's start. A good place. Because <laughs> uh, him, him and Jake Ferguson both had their, their season high in totals against the Eagles. So, I mean, trying to contain them is going to be tough, obviously. But um, like I mentioned before, I'd like to see Bradley Roby in the slot full time. Even if C.D. Lamb's there, I don't know if you really want Darius Slay following him there. I know he did well against Stefan Diggs and whatnot, but the Cowboys are tough. They're on fire. Their defense is, is playing with their, with their hair on fire. It's not going to be easy. But at the same time, it's just the Eagles need to bounce back. And, and Jalen Hurts, I think, is a little bit healthier than he was the first time they played the Cowboys. Dallas Goddard obviously playing is huge because he didn't play for the last 18 minutes or so in that game, and that's exactly when the offense kind of stopped moving the ball at all. So, I mean, we saw how, he, how the offense looked the past couple of weeks without him. So I think his return is huge. Cam Jurgens didn't play the first time they played the Cowboys. That's huge. Bradley Roby obviously didn't play. So, I mean, it's, it's, things are looking better health-wise for the Eagles. I know people are kind of dampering on the team themselves after last week. But I think that they're kind of trending in the right direction health-wise. It's just now mentality-wise and on the field they need to, to step up. You brought up Dallas. Uh, with, uh, with Dallas Goddard against Dallas, uh, that's the only Dallas that we love. But – how much of, a, of an impact are, are we going to see there? Because you, you talked about it beforehand, too, with Jalen against the Niners and just, I mean, Jack Stoll's on the field and, you know, bless his heart. Like, he's doing whatever he can. But Jalen's not going to throw to him. And he wasn't ever going to throw to him, right? So there's a difference with Goddard out there. But how much does that really kind of keep the defense honest? And certainly with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and kind of keeping those corners at bay as well, maybe have to, to take up some spot of the safeties. But where do you see, um, I guess, Dallas Goddard making a difference? How much of a difference does he make? And is there any concern? Um, I know that they say he's fully healthy, good to go, but is there any concern coming off of that injury? 
I mean, obviously you're going to be concerned, but I feel like they gave him that. He probably could have played last week, I think, in my mind. And they kind of were like, no, take an extra week. Make sure you're 110% healthy because we obviously need to win this game too. So, I mean, I'm not concerned too much about his health, but it's just what he does. I know, I think it was on ESPN, they talked about how much um, double high safety they've been seeing this year instead of single high like they were last year. And I think having a player like Dallas Goddard that can be in line or in the slot, he's going to occupy one of those safeties. And that's going to be, the safety's going to have to worry about him now. They can't just worry about Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown on the outside. So I think that's where it'll help. And obviously, Jalen Hurts, like you said, trust Dallas Goddard to catch the ball. He's going to actually throw it to him. There's not going to be just 10 targets for everybody else and then nothing to the inside end. So it's a, that's going to help a lot. And then obviously, Dallas Goddard, I think, is rated as the first or second best run blocking tight end in the NFL. So he's one of the most, not, not only is he a damn good receiver, he's great in the running game as well. And you don't really have to, oh, now all of a sudden you have to bring in two tight ends because you want to run because Dallas Goddard's not there. And it becomes like an obvious tell. With Dallas Goddard, they can leave him there. They can have the receiver still and actually move the ball in the running game. So I think he just adds a bunch of elements to their offense. And one more thing, I tweeted it out as well. I think in the three games before his injury, Jalen Hurts completed like 70% or more of his passes in all three of those games or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then in the last, the last three games without Dallas Goddard, he's completed like 50% in one game, six, low 60s in the other two games. So it's just you can see the toll that it takes on Jalen Hurts as well. Not having that little, I guess, outlet to him when, when AJ and Devontae are covered. Whereas like before, it was like I get to force something to like Devontae, uh, DeAndre Swift or something like that. But now just Dallas Goddard, he had so many layers to the offense. Yeah, I, I, you're right. I think it's the safety blanket that he does have in Dallas Goddard. Uh, and it's a great point too. I mean, I, I forget about it quite honestly. And I don't know, maybe this is just a disservice to to Dallas uh, in, in his blocking ability, but he he is, he's one of the best blocking tight ends. And, you know, you see it, I, I guess they get back now to like the mic'd up moments uh, in the Dolphins game. I think that was the best where he's like, you know, you know, it's coming. Of course, he's talking about the, the brotherly shove, but still it's like, he, he, I love the fact that he's willing to get in there, do the dirty work, even in the early part of the season, whenever like, I was not going to, I was very frustrated by the lack of, you know, getting Dallas Goddard involved. Now, thankfully they moved forward with that and like, all right, hey, we need to get DG in there. Um, but the fact that he's willing to do that, uh, I think it'll pay dividends. And it's also a great point that you mentioned too, is you, you don't allow the defense, I guess, to key off as much and saying like, well, okay, they got the multiple tight end package in here. Uh, it's probably going to be a run play because why, why on earth are you going to be, you know, muddying up the waters and put them in there? Cause you're not going to throw to them. So hopefully we see that difference. Um, on the other side of the ball, we speaking of tight ends, you brought up Jake Ferguson having his career high. Hopefully, he doesn't have one of those uh, th- this week, uh, on, on or I guess uh, you know against the, against the Cowboys. But as far as uh, the matchup that we might see, you know, Kevin Byard's a possibility. Uh, we've got Shaq Leonard, as we've been talking about, Zach Cunningham. But where where does this need to really start from? You know, and and is this a, a combo? We, we've kind of talked about it already. You mentioned being a combo of of play calling with the side and the scheme, but also the players and execution and getting it done. Who do you think needs to step up the most to ensure that a Jake Ferguson, you know, doesn't doesn't go off and have that career day again? Uh, I mean, it's got to be the linebackers because I feel like that's what we saw them target last week, and um, hopefully Zach Cunningham and, and Shaq Leonard can can do a better job. Kevin Byard, he might step up and, and be there, but I think they're just going to throw a, a bunch of different things at him because honestly, forget about Brandon Cooks and, and whoever else, but I feel like CeeDee Lamb, Jake Ferguson, that's who you have to focus on. And if, if anybody else beats you, so be it. Hopefully it's not a throwback of last year where we saw T.Y. Hilton get 40-yard bomb on, on fourth down, whatever that nonsense was. <laughs> but I feel like, I, th- I honestly feel like you can live with CeeDee Lamb going off because he's going to get his regardless. But you can't give up 91 yards to Jake Ferguson again. That just can't happen. Yeah. So it's just, I feel like they have to have some sort of strategy. Sean Desai has to throw different looks at him. Maybe chipping him at the line with, with a fifth, fifth guy in the box or something like that could help. But it's just, you got to be a little bit more physical. You can't get the free releases where he's catching a 40-yard pass. It just can't happen again. So it's going to take multiple people. I don't think it's just going to be one person. But we saw how they took Travis Kelsey out of the game earlier in the year. So yeah. they need to kind of apply. And they have to treat Jake Ferguson like he's Travis Kelsey, honestly, because he needs that attention. He's been pretty damn good this year. And, and they can't just afford to just not cover him at all. Yeah, you can see that Dak definitely uh, targets it. I, I know you had to obviously go with the T.O.A. Hilton uh, part there. That, that, that <laughs> feels very primitive. Like every time that I see a Desai, you know, defense giving up a third and 14, third and 19, the immediate play that I do think of is that T.Y. Hilton one. It's like, oh, we're, we're good. We're good, baby. We got this thing. And, and you're like, oh, my gosh, they're going to give up that big of a play. So 
Hopefully we don't get one of those. Hopefully we f- fix these. We've been talking about, you know, the changes that the defense is saying that they're making. Sirianni said it needs to be better and all these things. Um, hopefully it is, right? And and especially for the, the biggest reason of just winning the game, right? Jalen Hurts, that's the only thing that matters. Winning is the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that matters to us. However, I mean, the noise outside, you can't ignore it. It's the MVP battle. It's Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott. Whoever wins this game is almost assuredly going to vault themselves into the top spot for the MVP conversation. What, where are you feeling at or where are you at right now with, with a Dak Prescott? You know, we're going into this. I know he torched us last time, but is, is it a little bit of fluff? Is he actually playing better? Do we, should we give him a little bit of credit this season now? Uh, and then also, you know, how, how, do we, how do we get to him? How do we uh, kind of falter that and help Jalen to reassert his dominance in the MVP race? I mean, I, I hate to say it, but Dak Prescott's playing really damn good right now. And it's just yeah. like, it sucks. We, nobody wants to say it. Nobody wants to admit it. But he's making some crazy <laughs> it's throws. Hard to it's say. not like he's, yeah, it's not like he's Brock Purdy out there where he's throwing into windows that me and you could probably throw into. But it's just like, he's making some tough throws. He's coming up clutch. I mean, they, they've dominated in their last couple of weeks, so he hasn't really had to be clutch. But he's just, it's okay to admit that he's playing really well. But at the same time, I think the Eagles have the potential and the personnel to get after him. It's just what they kind of struggled with the first time they played him was they would let in, letting Dak Prescott get out of the pocket and they had to kind of guard two plays in one where he's getting out on the side or he's making somebody miss. They're not completing the sack and then he's hitting somebody. It's just frustrating. So they kind of just have to contain him, limit him that way, limit his legs, limit him extending plays. And then the pass rush just has to step up. I know we talk about the secondary and the linebackers all the time, but this defensive front gets paid a lot, a lot of money. There's a lot of high draft picks invested there. Jalen Carter's kind of been missing after a hot start to the season. Mm -hmm. Jordan Davis has kind of come back to earth. So this is the game that they really need them to step up and rattle back early and often. I'm hoping they do. I I really am because, you know, naturally – Again, we want the win, but if uh, if Jalen could get the MVP, you know that'd be the icing on top uh, as as well for the season. But um, we would all trade that for you know getting the Super Bowl and everything else. So, uh, but talking about Jalen, still apparently, you know, we've mentioned it uh, before this as well. But it's Nick Bosa, the comments of Jalen being exposed. Dallas should watch that tape because that's how you beat him every single time. Maybe apparently, are you buying any of that? Absolutely not. Because at the same, I honestly feel like the Eagles are beating themselves at this point. Yeah. I think Dallas Goddard not being there, especially against San Francisco, because we saw Fred Warner kind of just be able to spy Jalen and kind of limit anything about him getting to the outside. Now, all of a sudden, if he has to worry about Dallas Goddard instead of Jack Stoll, that's a completely different situation. So just I think a bit. They, San, Francisco, for San, Francisco, San Francisco basically went to that game saying that they were playing 11 on 10, 11 on, 10 on defense because you didn't have to worry yeah. about Jack Stoll. He threw it to him, what, like in one time he had that one catch. So mm-hmm. it's like, you really don't have to, if you don't have to worry about a guy at all, it's just, it's like, especially, let's translate it to basketball. So like, you see guys that have no, they can't shoot a three for the life of them. So the defense just lets them stand out on the three-point line. They're not going to guard them. Oh yeah. It's the same thing with San Fran last week. They're just not going to defend the tight end, no matter who was going in there. So I mean, having Dallas Goddard back is going to be huge. And I think for Jalen Hurts, that's just going to be such a help because we've seen his completion percentage, the difference when he's there, but not. So I think if Dallas Goddard can stay healthy, we're going to see a better Jalen Hurts. Hopefully the blocking is better in both the passing and, and running game, and, and then we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm hoping that we see it for sure. It, uh, t- talking about you know just exploiting what we can, I think there will be a big difference. I agree with you on, on uh, Dallas Goddard. But uh, we all saw the Seahawks game against Dallas. Um, the fact that, you know however you want to say, did the refs help them? Fully, they helped him a little bit. There's several calls that I would question. Now, am I biased? You know, perhaps, but I'm just saying there's lots of things that happened in that Seattle game. Uh, but still, Seattle played really good, and they had a very close chance to win that game. Do you see anything? Did you see anything takeaways from that one where a difference from when we played them several weeks ago that we can exploit? Uh, I know Deron Bland, you know, hey, he's great at intercepting the ball and returning it for six, but he's also been giving up tons of yardage. Maybe that's the aggressiveness, but is there a point or element on that Cowboys D that you see we could exploit? I think definitely Deron Bland could be taken advantage of, and we saw what Devontae Smith did to him in the first round, mm-hmm. the first matchup, because – He's, he's going to get a lot of picks, but it's because he takes a lot of chances. Very similar to how Asante Samuel used to be back in the day. And um, even Trevon Diggs, when he was healthy, he, a couple years ago when he had like eight picks, nine picks, whatever it was, yeah. it was like an obscene amount. He had a ton of picks, but he also gave up a ton of touchdowns and yardage. So like, you just have to take your chances. And that's, that's been one of my criticisms with Jalen Hurts recently, 
is that he's kind of been a little scared to throw the ball and give his guys like chances where we saw that earlier in the year. And especially the last year where he would just throw it up to Devontae Smith, yeah. throw it up to AJ Brown. I just let them make a play. I feel like he hasn't really done that this year. Maybe it's because of his leg. Maybe it's because the offensive line hasn't been the same. But I think Dallas' defense in general could be taken advantage of. Their safeties aren't the best. Their linebackers aren't the best. It, their defensive front is just really good, and they make you throw the ball really fast, a lot faster than you want to. Otherwise, you're going to get sacked. So it's just hopefully this is a game where we see – I know nobody wants to talk about wide receiver screens and Brian Johnson, but hopefully <laughs> we'll see a screen, a couple of screens to Dallas Goddard that they loved using last year. That's, I feel like that hasn't been used at all this year. And, and some of their big plays last week were screens. So it's just like you need to kind of take advantage of Dallas's aggressiveness, get the ball out quick, make Jalen Hurts comfortable, get him, get him into a rhythm. Because if you start the game, you go, he goes 0-2 on the first drive, and they hand it off to DeAndre Swift for two yards. It's just going to suck the air out of the team. And you need to get off to a fast start. I think quick passes, the screen game. We saw it early last week with the slants, and they just never did it again, which didn't make any sense. Yeah. So it's just hopefully they, they take advantage of the quick game and their personnel, and they get going that way. I'd love to see him speed it up. I, that is one of the things I've talked about all week is – for some reason, we seem to be so slow and methodical, and I get it at times, but it's like if we could get a little bit more of the quick game, get Jalen in a rhythm, get the offensive line moving down the field, get some running game going too, uh, that, that's what I hope that we're seeing too. So um, we'll see. I, I am, I'm confident. Uh, before I give mine, I'll put you on the spot, those score predictions for the game. So uh, big one here questions on the defense, you know, can you limit the Cowboys? Is it going to be a shootout? Do you see the defense responding in a big way? But uh, score predictions for the game, what you going with? I'm going to go 31-27 Eagles. I think I don't think it's going to be a blowout either way. I, I can see this game easily going either way, to be honest. But it's just, I think this team is going to come out with a chip on their shoulder that they haven't had in a while. And uh, hopefully they respond. Maybe I'm just being biased and, and just hoping for the best. But I think they have the personnel. They're getting healthy at the right time. And maybe they catch the Cowboys kind of like the 49ers caught them last week, where like, like they're riding high, they're getting a little too cocky, a little too comfortable, and they catch them off guard, especially at home where Dallas has been on fire. Mm-hmm. But I think the Eagles get it done 31-27. Let's go. All right. I, that, that's what I hope for. Um, I, mine is 34-31, so we're very close right there in, the, in that proximity and score. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, I'm going to be there, by the way. So for anybody watching this um, and you see me, I'm going to be in an A.J. Brown, uh, the black jerseys, which we're not wearing this year, but, you know, I could be repping that. So I'll be in A.J. Brown. Uh, come say hi. But uh, Anthony DeBona, again, appreciate you stopping by. This is going to be probably regular occurrence. We'll preview in games and everything. Uh, but if Hopefully. you don't follow Anthony outside the birds uh, on X, uh, as well as uh, other places, right? What's the – did it change for the, the blog? Um, what's the – No, so the blog? outside the birds. Outside the birds. Okay, there you go. Outside the birds.com. But uh, now I appreciate it, Anthony, as always. Uh, Till next time, uh, we will see you guys and go birds. Go birds.